guys, it's Candace, and in today's QuickBooks Tips and Tricks, I want to talk to you about sub accounts and understanding how to set them up. So I received an email with somebody who was saying they were kind of confused with how they work, and so I wanted to jump in here and show you a few things. So the first thing I want to talk to you guys about is the whole point of sub accounts, in my opinion, and it's just that, it's only my opinion, is that you want to create your chart of accounts around what you want to see on your reports because the chart of accounts and your reports are linked directly together. So if you go under reports, company and financial profit and loss standard, and you were going to look at a PL. Let's just look at one for all time. This is my training file. Whatever your account is called here on the left, that is what exactly it says inside the chart of accounts. So if I go now under list, chart of accounts, whatever title you have here under income, book sales, consulting income, you're going to notice, let's move these over so we can kind of look at them. Those are the exact same titles that you're seeing here on your profit and loss are matching. So if you ever want it to say something different than what you're seeing, then that means you need to be changing it inside of your chart of accounts. So that's the basic beginning understanding of how the chart of accounts work. Then what you're going to see is say here, for example, there is insurance and then under insurance, there's liability, and there's auto insurance. If you go over to the P&L, you're going to see liability here and auto insurance here. Then you'll see a dash other. This is a common mistake that I see people make. What this means when it says dash other is that this $1,855 was coded up to insurance expense instead of one of the subcategories. So one thing to know is if you have a main category and you create what's called subcategories below it, which I'll teach you how to do in a minute, that you no longer go back up and use the main category. You need to create additional subcategories if there's not a title or topic type of expense that you want to use. So this dash other, you don't wanna have that. See down here, dash other. So what you do is you can go in, if you're seeing this on your profit and loss, go in, open it up and decide what type of insurance expense is it? Is it liability? Then when you save it, this is what I see a lot of times with people, it's an old transaction. When you save it, it will then move it up to where it actually belongs when we refresh the page. Say that we want to put this one under auto, just as an example. We save it. Now when we look at it, we don't have a dash other, we only have insurance and our two types of expenses. And then the benefit of creating sub accounts is it takes everything below it and totals it for you. So it takes your liability and your auto together and gives you a total for your overall insurance expense. So that's the benefit of doing subcategories. Now, for me personally, I recommend trying to keep your chart of accounts and so that you're as simple as possible. Try to do less subcategories than more subcategories, in my opinion. And that's because the more subcategories you get, the more complicated it is to read. And sometimes people break down subcategories that aren't necessary to break down. So it just really depends what you have. Go in if you ever see a dash other, open it up, decide where it actually belongs. And if it belongs somewhere that you don't have, then add that category into QuickBooks. So let's go in now to your chart of accounts. Now that we've talked about how the chart of accounts affect the reporting system, let's go in and actually talk about how the chart of accounts work. So to get to chart of accounts, you go under list chart of accounts, and this, these are all in order by type and then typically alphabetical. There's a few different ways that you can set this up. What I typically recommend doing is try to keep it as simple as possible when you're doing your chart of accounts. So if you go down to the bottom, and you can click new or control N or you can right click whatever you want. They all do the same thing. You can create new, you can edit it, you can delete it, or you can make it inactive. So inactive means there's transactions that are in there, but you no longer need that account and you can choose to make them inactive because if you have any transactions in there, they won't delete them. So if you go down to the bottom, if you want to add subcategories. You can only add a subcategory to the same main category, meaning if you want to add a automobile type of expense, then your new category, your subcategory also has to be expense. You can add subcategories to any type 
over here is type of account. So you have bank accounts, fixed assets, those kinds of things. You can create subcategories for fixed assets. You can do them for income. You can do them for expenses, anything. But you just have to do, it has to be the same type to make it a subcategory of the main category that you're creating, okay? So in our example, insurance is the main category. And then we have subcategories below that. So let's say we wanted to add a category. We go down and we add new. We choose the type of category. Remember, it has to be the same as the main category that you're creating. And then if it's expense, for this example, we'll click continue. The title that you put, you can always change your type up here if you accidentally select the wrong one. Or after you've created it and you need to move it around, you can do that as well. So the, this title that we put in here, so let's just call it bond. And then down here, we create, uh, this is the subcategory we're creating. If you're starting your chart of accounts from the beginning, you might need to start with your main category first. So always have your main category first. Now we're going to add a subcategory to it. So it's just a, a, a deeper level, basically. So we've added that here. Then we're going to click subcategory, account of, a sub account of. And then you're going to choose your main category, insurance expense. Then you're going to click save and close and it's going to create your new account here. Now say that your accounts are out of order. You can always put your cursor over there. So what happens is when you put your cursor, when you're in the chart of accounts and you put your cursor over the dot, you'll see there's a four way arrow. If I move it over here, there's no four way arrow. But if I put it right over the dot, we're going to get a four way arrow. Then we can move this over and we could do a deeper subcategory. So it could be insurance expense, auto insurance, and then bond by moving the dot directly in the chart of accounts. So sometimes, or say the alphabetical order, it's out of order, you can grab that dot and move it around, whether it's a sub account or any of these other types of accounts. So once you start adding, sometimes it doesn't put them in order alphabetically anymore. What you need to do is grab that dot and move it down, so say medical. We want down here. So it's in alphabetical order. This is just how you can adjust and move your chart of accounts in general. This is more of an advanced technique. So you can grab that. If you move it over, it makes it a sub account. So what I'm doing is I'm using, I'm, I'm putting my mouse over the dot, letting the four way arrow show up, then holding the left arrow or the left mouse button down and moving it anywhere I want. Okay. So that's a more advanced feature that you can check out and mess with. The good thing is, the only time you have to be careful is if you do what's called merging accounts. In other words, you name two accounts the same and it merges them. You can't unmerge. Um, that's a totally different video. If you need to learn how to merge, feel free to check that out. I've already created a how-to video on that. So anyways, have an amazing day. This is a kind of a complicated topic. Just remember, try to keep your chart of accounts as simple as possible. Sometimes if you're a bookkeeper, the owners just want certain complexity. That's one thing, but try to keep it simple if you're an owner and you're the one who's making the decisions. And if you are making the decisions, I always come about like, well, what do you want to see? What expenses, what categories do you want to see on your profit and loss? And I typically try to stay away from tons of subcategories because there's just more chance of having problems and it gets just too complex for being able to read it and keep it simple as owners, managers of your business. All right. So hope that helped. If you have any questions, I missed something, feel free to comment down below and I will try to answer your question. And if you're looking for, you know, you want to keep QuickBooks simple, but you really would like to create confidence, what I call confidence with QuickBooks, feel free to check out confidencewithquickbooks.com, my online course. I'll put a link up above and down below. And if you're to the point where you're not really looking for a course that you can take over five weeks, you need personalized assistance, you're having struggles with a specific part of QuickBooks, feel free to check out working with me privately. I offer a few private sessions a week. And then if you enjoy these tips and tricks, feel free to subscribe and you'll get them in your inbox. I'll put the link up above or down below. And then if you love my YouTube channel, as always, you can subscribe there as well. Leave me comments. Let me know how you guys are doing. I will talk to you soon. Have an amazing day. Bye-bye. <music>